Welcome to our video series on more advanced features of Windows XP. In this video, we'll discuss the Control Panel Power Options. Now if we take a look at Power Options, let's double-click to open it up. And there are some often overlooked but very important options here. They have to do with how your computer behaves regarding shutting down temporarily, or shutting down part of it, shall we say, to save power. And also, there are some options on how your computer behaves when the power button is held down, for example. So, let's go through these. There are some preset power schemes. For example, Always On. And OK, those are the options for Always On. Home Office Desk, and Never Never Never. And what you may want to do is simply customize these yourself. So turn off Monitor. After how many minutes of inactivity do you want your monitor to shut itself off? And then to bring it back, just simply move your mouse, and the monitor will come back. It's important to know that this is different than Screensaver. With a Screensaver, your monitor is still active, but there are images that keep coming up, so that what's appearing on the monitor keeps changing. But this actually shuts off the monitor, so it effectively goes into Standby, so you have a number of options here. If you wanted to never shut down your monitor automatically, you could choose Never, or any of these other periods of time. I'm just going to stick with Never for now. Turn off hard disks. After how much inactivity do you want the hard disks in your computer to shut down? So, you have a number of options there. Now, obviously, shutting down part of your computer saves power, but as it regards the hard disks, as with many of these things, there seem to be good arguments on both sides. One argument is that you don't want to shut down your hard disks because the process of shutting them down and starting them up again puts more strain on them, and therefore you want to keep them spinning continuously. And the other argument is that shutting down the hard disks when they aren't being used helps them last longer. So you're going to find arguments on both sides, so you may want to research this, and you can research what you feel would help the longevity of your hard drives, but purely from a power saving point of view, you could shut them down to save some power there. So, there are the periods of time you can choose from. Obviously, with any of these things, I wouldn't keep the period of time too short, because then everything keeps shutting down after three minutes, for example, then the hard disks and the monitor are going to keep powering up and powering down and up and down, so you probably want to put a decent period of time, perhaps at least a half hour or so. Okay, but in this example, I'll just stick with never. System Standby. What this basically does is keep your computer running, but it turns off the hard drive, turns off the monitor, your computer kind of shuts down without turning itself off, if that makes sense. Then to come back from a System Standby, it's not really a matter of moving the mouse. It may be different on your PC, but in many cases, to come out of System Standby, you just need to press the power button, and your computer comes back. It doesn't actually boot up from scratch, it just picks up where you left off. So if you are working on documents and your computer goes into standby, then when you press the power button, you're back to where you were working before. So again, here are the periods of time you can choose from, and we'll stick with never in this instance. And then you can save this power scheme that you customized and call it whatever you want. OK, if we look at the Advanced tab now, OK, there are a couple of options here. Always show the icon on the taskbar, the Power Savings icon. I would say that's not important, but if I check that and apply, you see, there it is. But let's turn that off. OK, Prompt for Password when Computer Resumes from Standby. That's pretty self-explanatory. 
you may wish to set that up to make your, especially if your computer is in a public area, you may wish to set it up with a password there to make it more secure. Then power button. When I press the power button on my computer, and I would say this option is very important. The options are do nothing, which I wouldn't suggest, ask me what to do, stand by, and shut down. You can see that it's shut down by default. I would lean towards having this as shut down. The reason is that sometimes Windows behaves strangely and sometimes stops responding to you. You move the mouse and nothing's happening or the keyboard's not working and often the only way to come out of that is to actually shut down the computer. And if you press the power button to do that but you've actually chosen that it does nothing then obviously you're kind of stuck and you actually have to turn the computer off at the wall, unplug it. So I do suggest that you have this as shut down. So if you do have problems having the computer responding, you can just hold down the power button for a few seconds and the computer will shut down. Then just leave it for a few seconds to cool down, so to speak, and then press the power button again to boot up and your problem will probably be solved. I've had to do that a number of times, so that's the suggested setting. Less important is when I press the sleep button on my computer. Do nothing, ask me what to do, stand by, or shut down. It probably makes sense to leave the sleep button feature as causing a standby. That effectively puts the computer to sleep until you choose to start using it again. Okay, the next tab is Hibernate. And it says here, when your computer hibernates, it stores whatever you have in memory on your hard disk and then shuts down. So effectively what it does is that when you go into hibernation, everything that you're working on is saved, saved to the hard drive, and then your computer goes into hibernation. So when it comes back, it can carry on exactly where it left off because everything was saved. Then it retrieves all this information from the hard drives and then you can carry on where you left off. So you can enable that if you wish, and it tells you how much disk space you have free and how much you need to use this hibernation feature. So 448 megabytes needed, and I have plenty of room, so that's not a problem. And finally, the UPS tab, Uninterruptible Power Supply. If you aren't familiar with them, they're devices that sit between your power outlet socket and your computer. What they do is, for example, if there's a power cut, and if there's a power cut, your computer will shut down, so you can lose data and also damage your computer. But these uninterruptible power supplies sit between your power supply and your computer, so if there is a power outage, they keep supplying power to your computer at least for a while so you can shut down safely and not lose any data or not do your computer any harm. As you can see here, I don't have one installed because the status is all grayed out, but you can configure a UPS device here. Those are the power option properties you can specify. And as I mentioned, they are often overlooked, but they are very important. It depends on what's important to you, whether you want to save power or you're just happy leaving everything on your computer running around the clock. But as I said, there are two sides to the argument. If things keep running, then there's less starting and stopping of devices, which is either good for them, depending upon whom you listen to, or shutting down of devices from time to time is good for them. So it's just something you have to consider. If saving power is important to you, then obviously you'll set this all up. But it is important to go through this and set them up so you're happy with them because they're quite fundamental to what happens in your computer, especially in terms of figuring out what you want the power button to do when you hold it down, particularly shutting down, in case your computer has become unresponsive to anything else.